Hey everyone, welcome back to Mini Bike Mike's Garage. So as you can tell, we're not doing mini bike stuff today. And if you've wandered onto this channel and you're saying, well, where is the mini bike stuff? Just, just search, you'll find it. There should be lots of horizontal Honda, CT70 um, type stuff. Some with original engines, some with aftermarket engines and so forth. A lot of good stuff on there if you're into mini bikes. But this winter, I've actually got a different project going on. I'm working on a 1963 Chevrolet Corvair van. I've had it for a number of years. I've done a few videos on it. If you're interested in that kind of content, also look for that. That's on my channel. Now, the old van has got an issue with the wiring. Um, it's just a mess. And so I have actually purchased a new fuse block and all new wiring harness, and that will eventually get installed in and in the van and we'll do a video on it. It hasn't happened yet. And when that all happens, one of the things I want to do is change out the alternator. It currently has an alternator that has an external voltage regulator uh, as part of it. And I want to go to maybe something a little more modern that has an internal voltage regulator. Uh, and this is a GM style, I think they call it a 10 SI alternator. And it just, for me, it just has, I think it has a little simpler wiring. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to swap that out. I thought I'd go ahead and do a video today on how I'm going to wire this alternator in that vehicle. Now, this is not a how-to. Um, this is just purely entertainment. You're watching me and I'm going to go through the steps that I'm going to do to put this in my vehicle. Uh, some people out there may want to follow that. And if you do, that's awesome. Um, others may go, oh, no, that's completely wrong. Don't do that. That's, you know, that's okay too. I've done this multiple times and it seems to work for me. Now, if you do follow what I'm doing and you have an issue, just remember this. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. If I'm not telling you to do it this way, so get that out of get that out of the way here. All right. So what I've got, I've got a 12 volt battery. I've got a uh, like I said, a GM alternator, internally regulated alternator. I've got a four post simple key switch that I picked up off of Amazon. I've got a two prong plug that goes into the back of the alternator. I've actually got, I got an idiot light that's actually the illumination bulb out of a speedometer for a CT70 that we're just going to use for, you know, purposes today. And then I've got a few wires that it's going to take to hook this up and get it to show you how it's going to charge and, and how all that it functions. So I think uh, before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys in and show you the back of the alternator. Now, bear in mind, I'm not claiming to know how all this works, and I don't, okay? I just know that you spin it, and it sends some juice back to the battery and helps keep it, maintain it, and keep it charged. Um, but uh, there are posts, terminals on the back here um, that get used, and wiring gets put onto those. And so I'm going to bring you in, show you a little closer view of what it is I'm going to be plugging the wires into, and then we'll back back up and, and start actually installing all of it. All right, so just to say it one more time, again, I'm not pretending to understand how all this works, okay? This, but where this bolt is here, this is the um, ground for the alternator body, for the case. And so I'm actually going to hook a wire straight to that, and it's going to go to the negative post on the battery. Now, Typically, the alternator gets grounded through the bracketry and so forth on the engine. Um, and so you don't have to do that if you've got good, clean grounds everywhere else. But because we're not, don't have an engine and don't have all that bracketry right here, we're going to ground this directly to the battery. So that's what that post is. This post is, uh, I, I guess, maybe it, it, you might call it an output post. Uh, this gets hooked to the positive post on the battery. And I guess that's what sends, when the alternator is doing its thing, sends the juice back to the battery to help maintain its charge. And then you've got two spade plugs right here that this plug goes into. And uh, it's got one terminal that just comes right back and hooks to that post. 
And then I believe they call this the excite wire. This gets hooked up to 12 volts through the key switch. And uh, that's what tell when the key is on, tells it what to do its thing. So anyway, so that's the, the four terminals I guess I'm going to be using. Ground, uh, kind of an output post, and then these two spades up here. So I apologize if you're looking for more of a detailed explanation of how this all does its thing. I, I'm assuming you can look that up on YouTube and there's somebody that will that will tell you all that information. But unfortunately, that is not me. I'm just I'm just showing you how I'm going to hook it up. Now, like I said, I normally would not run this ground wire on the back of here if I felt like my alternator had good grounding through the body. Uh, through the bracketry of the engine and so forth. But for this application, we're going to run it right up here to the negative terminal on the battery. All right, so we've got that, got it grounded. So I've got the plug plugged in, and I think there is a one and a two on the back of this alternator. This, the, uh, the red wire in this with this plug is, is coming out of the number two position and it gets put right back here on this post. Then I'm going to grab another wire that's going to also go on that post. And this is going to go up straight up to the positive post on the battery to give the whole system 12 volts. Now, typically, when I go to install this in the vehicle, I won't hook this straight from this post straight to the battery. I'll run this to the positive post on the starter. And the only reason being is I kind of like the battery cables on the on the battery to be clean and, and not have a whole lot of other extra wires hooked to them and so forth. So I will go straight from here to the uh, post on the on the starter. But in this case, I don't have a starter in the system, so I got to hook it to the battery. Same way with this wire. This red wire is also going to get connected to the back of this post. But in the real world application, when I install this, all this into the vehicle, this wire will come from the fuse block underneath the dash and it will go straight to the key switch. The key switch has a terminal that says battery on it. And that's where we're going to hook this wire. And like I said, when I put this in the van, instead of this wire coming from this key switch to the back of that alternator, it's just going to go from the key switch straight over to the fuse block. And that will power this switch with 12 volts. All right. And then there is also on the back one of these posts says ignition. And that post is only energized when the key is in the on position. And it's sending 12 volts down to the coil. Well, we're also going to send it here to the alternator. I'm going to go ahead and tighten those up just a little bit, just to make sure we got a good connection. All right, so just to kind of re rehash here. So I'm going to hook this up to the battery. And I'm going to have 12 volts coming in to this post, this terminal. It's going to go into the alternator. And it's also going to go over here to the key switch. So the key switch has 12 volts sent to it. It will not come back out this white wire until I turn the key to the on or start position. Okay. It runs down the, the white wire. And I am going to put a idiot light in line and I'm going to plug the other end into the excite wire in the back of the alternator okay now the last wire to hook up is the hot wire to the battery make sure we don't have any sparks make sure everything looks good there and then I'm actually going to hook up a volt meter here so you can see just what we've got going on. So this battery currently has 12.1213 volt, volts, okay? Now, this bulb holder is not in very good shape. So when I turn this key on, 
the light should come on, but if it doesn't, that we might have to fiddle with the bulb. Oh, no, it did. It did come on. So, all right. So we've got 12 volts coming into the system. When I turn the key on, that 12 volts goes here to the, to the idiot light. And somehow when this all works, when this starts spinning, it cancels that out and the bulb goes, quits uh, illuminating and will go out. And that tells us that everything's good. If you watch here, hopefully when I spin this, we should see 13, maybe 14 volts. Uh, I'm not sure if this thing will spin this as fast as what the engine does. There we go. So the, the bulb went out. We're at, we're at 14 volts. So it is working. And then as you see, when it quit spinning, the light came on. Now, in my application, that is incredibly important because in a Corvair that I'm going to be installing this in, it's an air-cooled vehicle. It only has one fan belt, okay, that comes from the crank up and over, and it spins a huge fan on top of the engine to blow air over it, to air cool it, and then it continues on, and then it actually spins the alternator also. And if for some odd reason you throw that, fan, that belt or it breaks or whatever, and quit spinning this alternator, that light will come on, and then that will let us know, hey, something's awry in the back, uh, and probably the, the cooling fan is not spinning either. So it's uh, that's why I, you could actually, this Excite wire, this, this white wire, I could go straight from the alternator right over to the positive post on the coil, the ignition coil, and not have to run this all the way up the ignition switch. But I really, I need that idiot light up on the dash. And so I've got to run a wire up there anyway. So I'll just run this through up to the dash, through that light, and then just to the key switch. The other thing, one more thing, some guys will run a diode in this wire. A diode only lets power flow one direction. Uh, I've never had an issue, um, but I guess you know, the, the fear is, is that if something is up and I guess if it flows back the opposite direction, maybe you can't shut the vehicle down or do something because it's going to then be powering back through the ignition and still powering the coil. Um, and so the key, when you turn the key off, it doesn't shut it down. But I've never used a diode. Um, and in this case, you saw that when, you know, when we shut it off and everything, it, it works the way it should. So I'm not going to install one, but hey, if you feel the need to do that, watch other vehicle or other videos and, and they'll show you what to do. So anyway, thanks for following along. If you need to put a uh, internally regulated alternator on, you can put this in anything, tractor or vehicle or whatever. This is the simplest wire that wiring that I have come up with to get it to work and actually uh, maintain a charge on your battery. So anyway. Feel free to follow along. More Corvair content coming up. Actually, a Corvair is an odd, it's an odd duck to begin with, but it actually, the engine spins the opposite direction of normal applications. In a normal application, this alternator spins in a clockwise direction, but on a Corvair, it the engine spins counterclockwise. So and in a future video, we'll actually be taking this apart and swapping out the other fan blades so that it cools going the opposite direction. So look for that also. Guys, have a great day. I'll see you on the next video.